Welcome. This is my video on the 90s animated X-Men show season 3 episodes 18 and 19, Orphan's End and Love in Vain. So, before I get into it, there is a link in the description box to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. They really deserve your support. Incredibly important strike. And there's a bunch of video links that help explain why this is such an important strike. And, yeah, let's get into it. So, episode 18, Orphans End. I really love that, like, at, you know, at first, the, you know, Storm and, and Cyclops are like, who could this be? It's not an X-Man, because they're, you know, they don't get out of bed this early, you know. Maybe it's Gambit. He's, you know, home really late. Wouldn't be the first time. Press the button. Space Cop. We are looking for an intergalactic fugitive, and they're like, I guess it's just one of those days, huh? <laughs> they've, they've, the X-Men have now dealt with so many space matters that by now it's like, okay, I guess this is another, another one of those. And yeah, so Cyclops and Corsair realize that they're family. Since people don't really carry lockets with, with like pictures of family today, I wonder how you'd write something like this today. The back, the background of a smartphone device, maybe, or something. Just like, no, it's a classic. You know, the the yeah, Corsair has the the you know Cyclops, Mark, and the the mother all in the yeah, and yeah the, the cyclops is not super eager to accept this reality corsair is a bit more uh, yeah and you know corsair is like where, where are the rest of the x-men and cyclops is like they're out helping someone who's not an intergalactic wanted man that sounds personal i wonder who he's talking about and yeah so cyclops of course has daddy issues, something in a lot of Western media. And, yeah, the Shi'ar actually shoot on, you know, they open fire on the, the what did they call it? Mini, mini train or something? And, yeah, Cyclops learn, and, and we, the audience, learn about the last time Corsair saw them in person. And, uh, the, the kids in person and yeah you can understand why he basically like he felt you know I guess he expressed a little bit of hope but he hasn't really been you know he hasn't been on earth looking for the the kids for a while and let's see yeah and we of course we have the the thing as also a trope the you know learning that you're one of your one or more of your parents is you know doing something that you don't think you know they're not who you thought they were kind of thing you know Cyclops says 20 years I've been thinking about my father I thought he was some hero and you know you you abandon us uh, th this kind of thing and yeah you know I mean hopefully most kids watching you know didn't actually have like some you know really awful person as a parent but it is part of growing up to realize that your parents are not perfect and you know intergalactic fugitive is more fun than just like some some minor thing and yeah when scott realizes you know he feels oh it's just about money so he actually agrees to turn in Corsair, who insists, no, no, they're bad cops. So you mean they're cops. But seriously, though, you know, I'm not expecting a children's show to acknowledge that all cops are bad, but it is a good, it's a good first step to point out that certainly they shouldn't blindly trust all cops. And yeah, very, very cool when Storm fights the Star Jammers. And they manage, e each of them gets like a moment to shine in the fight. 
And yeah, so they do manage to to win the day. They shoot down the Shi'ar spaceship, and you know Cyclops is like, you know, maybe maybe you could stay. And Corsair is like, you got it, buddy. I will. You know, I've I got my toothbrush. I can move in and cycle. Up to the, no, 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 I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. I, just for a few hours, you know. And yeah, the first thing Corsair says to Cyclops is, "So, you two, you're gonna, you know, you and Jean Grey, huh? Gonna get married?" Which is very, very kind of parent thing to say to a. To an adult, you know, of their adult offspring. It always feels so weird to say their adult child. And that brings us to episode 19, Love in Vain. So, yeah, the start of the episode, it is reiterated that Rogue cannot touch. She's very out of touch. And Wolverine encounters the cockroaches from Mars and that's again like just let's just appreciate these designs so that yeah cockroach pretty applicable but they've also got these like cyborg arms you know they've got like six or eight arms in total and you know they're green big red eyes zappy you know things just yeah really really cool design I gotta say, these were actually, I believe they're they're called the Colony. They would have been one of my guesses for who was in the spaceship that crashed, that turned out to be a, a prison transport ship in an earlier episode. When the, um, the, the one where we learnt about Lady Deathstrike. And, yeah, Cody is is actually back and the you know the it's I really appreciate you know before like ultimately they can't be together so the just to just to really twist that knife the the show makes sure that they you know they have really great chemistry you know and the the thing with you know he keeps calling her possum and she's like I I told you I don't want you to call me you know so the there's clearly you know it's like he's teasing her and it's in a way you know she's not like you know it's not like that she's actually outright you know like if a if a stranger called her that she might be legitimately offended but him calling her that clearly there's something there you know and just <laughs> And the thing, you know, the, the moment he did start to cross the street, I was also like, are you, are you really going to just walk across a city street just like, I mean, presumably, there, does he not know she can fly? Because she can fly, you know, she could just like fly over the cars and, you know, I, I guess they, they need a little bit of, of tension there, you know, the first chunk of this episode doesn't have a huge amount of action compared to a lot of other episodes so they they need the tension where they can get it but yeah you know she's like you know the the you can't you know you're gonna you're gonna get yourself hurt one day not as long as you're the one catching me and just, yeah like like she says he's still really smooth and they are actually able to to share a kiss because of the the zappy I, I guess the the spores maybe and yeah really cool when when Wolverine wakes up inside and has to fight his way out and starts to to turn and you know ultimately is able to fight it off because of the healing ability fighting the spores which I always quite appreciate when there's something like that there's a not not Wolverine but there's a there's a comic storyline where a bunch of heroes are like taken on a spaceship and it seems oh you know it's a really nice place you know kinda and Iron Man is one of them and so you know after a while he's like oh there's there's these spores 
I can, you know, my my suit can can tell that they're there and prevent me from ingesting any, so he's like the one who isn't affected, whereas everyone else, you know, just a great little, because cause it's, you know, it makes sense for the character. And, yeah, Rogue is very frustrated with the X-Men, and, you know, she's like, who says the X-Men can't have fun? Most of the people watching, I think. And, let's see, yeah, and, and you know, the, the Queen says that, you know, they need host bodies for the colony. They cannot reproduce, so they have to, you know, take over others, which I feel like there's a metaphor in there for, like, how incels have to spread the ideology through online radicalization. And Rogue blames herself for the mess that they're in, you know, just, yeah. Which, you know, and, and, you know, Cody does point out, you know, I would be miserable because I wouldn't be with you, you know. So the show makes sure to, because, because, like, there's a lot of media, there's a lot in Western culture that encourages women to blame them, and, and girls, to blame themselves if something in their life goes wrong somehow. So I really appreciate this episode saying, no, there's, you know, there's other people involved, you know, yeah. Sometimes, you know, you are at fault for something, but women and girls blame themselves for things that other people do to them at a uh, really, you know, so, so, yeah, appreciate this episode for that. We can be together, lizard and lizard. And yeah, the the just as Wolverine had suspected, the Akanti, the the big creature that serves as the ship, is indeed a slave to the colony. And once you know they're they're able to to free, I guess it's Xavier who's able to like unblock the un undo the yeah. And yeah, the the Akanti flies. Does it? Does it always land by just like crashing into the ground and sliding for a while? I just feel like that's probably kind of painful. Like, just imagine if every time you, if if we humans, whenever we wanted to stop walking somewhere, we had to walk directly into a wall. It just it feels like, I don't know. Maybe maybe it doesn't have a lot of feeling down there. And, yeah, ultimately, you know, Rogue cannot save Cody. He is one of them, which, you know, I appreciate, you know, the, the show is very much about that just because you're different doesn't mean, you know, that that's automatically bad. It does still say there is a line. Once you cross that, you can't be reasoned with kind of thing. I think that's about what I have for these two episodes. Let's see. Uh, right, I th I liked the decision that in Orphans End, it really is just like... The, yeah, the only X-Men we see in the entire episode are actually Scott and Storm. And, you know, yeah, the, the um, it's, it is very much Scott's story. Scott and Corsair, so yeah, I I quite I thought that was the the exact right choice to make. It would have felt, and you know, it it is also like there's a lot of characters in the episode. There's a lot of powerful characters in the episode, so it would have felt ridiculously overstuffed. But the choice was made that it's not Corsair alone. It's Corsair and his Star Jammers. So, you know, they they chose to have the Star Jammers instead of X-Men. And I think that was the right choice. And let's see the um don't have a lot more to say about Love in Vain. Let's see. Um it's kind of funny to me that like 
everyone speaks English. Like, these aliens can speak perfect English. Like, not even broken English, like Epsibah in Orphan's End. They just, like, perfect. You know, I, I guess it's just the leader. I guess it's just the queen who can speak perfect English. But just, it's it's a little funny to me that she, she doesn't even need, like, telepathy, which, like, I could understand. I could buy. If, if you're using telepathy, like, it might sound like English to the audience, but maybe you're using, like, images to communicate, you know. But no. If she opens her mouth, English comes out. And she understands English back. Like, she never seems confused by something someone else says, either. But that's, that's American media. There's a uh, reluctance to believe that other languages even exist. It, it makes the, you know, there's, there's important things for her to convey. So I appreciate that that's, uh, you know... I, I, don't, I don't disagree with the choice, is what I'm saying. I just think it's kind of funny. And I think that might be everything that I had to say. There's been a lot of space-centric episodes in, in the... Really, a, a significant chunk of the third season is, like, aliens. But the... Yeah. You know, once you once you get there, it's, you know it's difficult to. How do you resist going going with aliens over and over? And let's see. I I for, I'm not entirely sure if season four also has a lot of alien stuff. I do see that some stuff based on some of these titles, I can tell that there's some stuff coming up that is. Let's go with not alien. And I think that, yeah, that's that's what I had to say about these two episodes. Now, I'm going to go watch one episode, do a video on that, and then that is it for X-Men today. So, catch you soon. Make my mark.